Amen. So start with me in 2 Timothy chapter 1. 2 Timothy chapter 1. Just kind of as a key, a theme verse for tonight. 2 Timothy chapter 1. A firm foundation. As we head into a new year, everyone talks about how things are constantly changing. As I prayed about and thought through what God would have us think on and hear together from God's word, as I said, there could have been a lot of different directions that the word of God takes us, where Paul says, I press toward the mark. Colossians 3 says, setting your affection on things above. All kinds of different directions we could have gone as we stand at the beginning of a new year. But just, just this one word kept coming back to my mind with the world and the situations that we're facing uh, uncertainty. Uncertainty. As we head into a new year, uncertainty abounds. No one knows what's coming. And a lot of people are afraid. Many people are apprehensive and fearful about what might happen. We're talking about war in Israel. We're talking about, listen, listen you know this, right? An election year that brings back a lot of turmoil from 2020 we're talking about you can just sense people are just what, what so apprehension and here's the word uncertainty just everything is uncertain we have no idea what will happen tomorrow and and unbelievers are are anxious that's the other word that kept coming on anxiety <laughs> and aren't you glad and this, see, this is where my mind went with the scriptures, rolling through my mind. This is where my mind went. Aren't you glad that as a believer you have a solid foundation to stand on? And that's what it comes down to. Look at what Paul says, just by way of introduction tonight, and, and this gets us started in the, in, in, in the path that we want to go on tonight. For 2 Timothy 1, verse 12. For the which cause I also suffer these things. And that's the gospel, the work of Christ, verse 8. The partaker of the afflictions of the gospel, okay? For which cause I also suffer these things, nevertheless, I am not ashamed. Now, the word ashamed can mean embarrassed, but it can also mean disappointed, as in shown to be wrong. I am not ashamed. In other words, we could turn that around and say it positively. I am confident. Because look at what he says next. For I know whom I have believed. And am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. And we'll just keep on singing that wonderful hymn, right? The hymn writer got it right. Right off of this text, the hymn writer goes on to talk about things. I don't understand this. I don't understand that. But here's what I do know. Whom I've committed everything to. And I know that he will keep what I've committed unto him against that day. God will be the solid foundation of our lives. He was the solid foundation for Paul's life, and he'll be the solid foundation for us. So here's the thought, confidence. Here's the, here's the, 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 the application to our hearts tonight. Assurance. The believer has a solid foundation to stand on. Not just 2 Timothy 1.12. What about 1 John 5.13? These things are written that ye might know that ye have eternal life. I mean, this is the confidence we have as believers in the midst of uncertainty, in the midst of apprehension and anxiety. And then here's another verse, Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8. We have Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and today and forever. So our faith is firm in Jesus. Our faith is firm in the truth found in God's word. So while the lost may be uncertain and fearful about tomorrow, we can be sure and certain about many things. Now that's where my mind went. So what, what, is a, what are some of these truths that make up our firm foundation? What are some of these things the Bible tells us about that we can be sure of? With a biblical perspective and foundation, we can face tomorrow with certainty and hope and confidence. What can we expect? With everything that's changed, you know how people say the only thing certain is that nothing stays the same. You know, with, with everything changing, what can we expect as God's people? I mean, be assured of and know for certain that we can see tomorrow and the next day and the next day. 
what there are some things that we can expect and rely on and know for certain that will never change. These things, these truths will always remain. So there's five of them, and we're just just to, just to put them in our hearts as we head into a new year. Stand on this solid foundation. Whatever happens around us, we have this these these truths that make up our firm foundation. And the first one is God's presence. Go to Matthew 28 and verse 20. Matthew 28 and verse 20. A solid foundation is part of the solid foundation. So, oh, there's so many wonderful truths on it. But part of this solid foundation that we're pointing out tonight is the promise of God's presence. Matthew 28, starting in verse 18, you have this wonderful commission Jesus sends his disciples out in the power that God's given them to preach, teach all nations, baptizing them. And then look at verse 20, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And here's the thought. And I know the context, and so we're familiar with it, but take it out and put it in a bigger picture in your mind. Take it out of this immediate context and put it in a bigger picture. And lo, I am with you always even unto the end of the world. Amen. Jesus promised that he would never, Hebrews chapter 13, verse 6, leave us nor forsake us. One of the foundational truths that we can stand on as we head into a new year that gives us confidence and hope and, and, and uh, stable ground in our lives is the presence of God. What does he say in verse 20? Lo, behold, look. Lo, take note of this. I am with you. By the way, that's what makes the difference. It wasn't the disciples going and doing what they could do and hoping everything would work out. Jesus said, I'm going with you. But then notice the main thought is what I want to focus on always. You can put an S on there. That's what people do today, always. But the word always means in every place and circumstance. The word always means all the time. So there really is a little bit of a difference, but they both come together no matter where we find ourselves, no matter what we're doing in the place that we're in, and no matter when we find ourselves there. God is still with us. Lo, I am with you always. And then he defines it or puts a, a limit, if you will, on it. I'm with you all even unto the end of the world. The end of the world is when Jesus comes back and sets up his kingdom. He finishes the work that God gave him to do. God gave Jesus a work to do, and he's not done yet. He's going to come back. He's going to set up his kingdom on this earth. So at the end of the world is when everything is said and done, and we go home to be with Jesus in heaven. He'll be with us even to the end of the world. The literal word that's used here is the word for age. To, even to the end of the age, even to the end of God's plan and work in this world, God will be with us. So are, are, you, are you seeing this foundation that no matter what changes around us, we can know for certain that Jesus will always be with us? It doesn't matter if the circumstances are good or bad. Think about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. It doesn't matter if we're in the fiery furnace or think about those who are in the promised land as, as Joshua, we're studying Joshua on Sunday night and, and they're getting ready to experience all that God has for them by way of his, of his blessing. It doesn't matter if we're in the promised land experiencing God's blessing or in the fiery furnace and going through a trial. The, the, the foundation of every believer is God will never leave or forsake his people. I am with you always even unto the end of the world. Philippians 1.6 gives this wonderful thought, being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun, that's the starting point, a good work in you, will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. So one of the parts of this solid foundation that we stand on as God's people heading into a new year is God's presence. He promised to be with us. He promised to never leave us. We can be certain in the new year ahead of us that no matter what comes, no matter where we find ourselves, God will be with us. He will be at work. He will be at work in our world and in our lives. God has not gone anywhere and he won't go anywhere. He'll continue to be with us tomorrow, 
and the day after and the day after. And that's, that's what makes the difference. Just one example came to mind. Elijah mocked the prophets of Baal on, on Mount Carmel by saying that Baal was asleep or on a journey. Cry out louder because he can't hear you. Or maybe he's busy doing something. He's not. Baal was absent in the time of need because Baal was not real. <clears throat> Baal was a false god. We have the true God, and he has promised to never leave us nor forsake us. And of course, you know the rest of the story. Elijah prayed, and God sent down fire because God is still here. God is still here. God hasn't gone anywhere. And he'll continue to be with us even to the end of the world. Number two together, the firm foundation is made up of this wonderful truth of God's goodness and mercy. God's presence with us. He's always there, always at work. We, tomorrow when you wake up, he'll still be there, still doing his work. And, and, and that connects to Psalm 23, verse 6. Go, go to Psalm 23. His goodness and his mercy. Something that we can know for sure, something we can expect tomorrow, is that God will be present and with us. And number two, God's goodness and mercy will be Pursuing us. Look at Psalm 23, verse 6. A great psalm, but here's how it's summed up. Really, verse 6 does sum up the whole psalm. Surely. And I, and I want you to notice that, was it? Matthew 28. Lo, I am with you always. So there's this confidence, right? That's what we're hearing tonight. Surely. Certainly. Goodness and mercy. Here's the next word. Shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. One of the things that you and I can know for certain and expect in the day ahead, just one day at a time, in the year ahead, is God's goodness and mercy. It's a certainty. That's what the word surely is meant to tell us. It's a certainty. That is an unchangeable reality. Verse 23, or verse 6 of chapter 23, Psalm 23, is an unchangeable reality. Surely, goodness and mercy. What is certain is that God's goodness and mercy will follow us. And notice the phrase in verse 6, all the days of my life. How many do we have? We don't know how many days we have. But we know this, that every day God's goodness and mercy will be following us. Now this is for the child of God. So that's the whole message tonight is for the children of God's word. In a world that doesn't have any hope, there's a lot of anxiety and fear and and, and concern about all the change and uncertainty. But for the child of God, the Lord is my shepherd. Therefore, his goodness and his mercy will follow me all the days of my life. We can expect God's goodness and mercy tomorrow, just like we saw it today. If we're still alive and on this earth tomorrow, God's goodness and mercy will still be following after us because God promised that he would be, number one, with us. And he says, my goodness and mercy will be there in your life. 2 Corinthians chapter 12. Again, you get these illustrations of this. Paul, in his thorn in the flesh scenario, in his difficulty, his trial, what did God say to him? My grace is sufficient. Exactly what we need in our lives, God's blessing and goodness will not cease. It's going to always be sufficient. He's always going to provide exactly what we need right when we need it. Now, we know this, and so in your mind, you can, you can understand this. We can turn from God's goodness, and we can try to find life in the world. The children of Israel did. They turned from the source of living water and made to themselves cisterns, broken cisterns that could hold no water. Well, well that's crazy. We can turn from God's goodness and try to find life in the world and we'll be empty, but God will never stop being good. We just need to turn back to him and let, and what does the Bible say? Open wide thy mouth and I will fill it. God will never turn from his goodness and mercy. It will always be there following God's people, following us every day that we live. Surely good and mercy, goodness and mercy shall follow me. We don't have to search for it. It's going to come and find us. Go to Psalm 71. It's just a couple pages to the right. I want to, you to see David's testimony of this. Psalm 71, verse 9. So here you hear, hear, you hear an aging David, right? An aging saint. What does David say? 
Cast me not off in the time of old age. Forsake me not when my strength faileth. David knew that God was with him when he was young. God's always good. But David also knew that God would be with him when he was getting older. David wanted to know God's continuing goodness and work even as he was old and gray-headed. Look at verse 14. But I will hope continually and yet will yet praise thee more and more. My mouth shall show forth thy righteousness and thy salvation all the day. For I know not the number thereof of my days, but I know God's going to be there. I will go in the strength of the Lord God. I will make mention of thy righteousness, even of thine only. O oh God, look what he says, thou hast taught me from my youth, and hitherto have I declared thy wondrous works. Now also when I am old and gray-headed, O oh God, forsake me not. Until I have showed thy strength unto this generation and thy power to every one that is to come. God, David knew that God would be with him the whole way through. From day one to day end. <laughs> to, to the last day that David breathed his last breath on this earth. God would continue to be with David until David left this world. So what can we expect tomorrow? See, this is what we're doing tonight. This is what, the believer has hope. We, we, we sing a different tune in a world that's full of uncertainty and anxiety. What can we expect tomorrow? What can we be sure of and know for certain? We can know that God's goodness and mercy, Psalm 23, 6, will continue in our lives. When we wake up tomorrow, we know that God will give us this day our daily bread. God will be there to carry out his good work in our lives. We can know that Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd. He makes me lie down in green pasture. We can know that all this will come to pass. He leads me beside the still waters. He leadeth me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And even through the valley of the shadow of death, we know that he'll be with us. Anointing our head, preparing a table before us, our cup running over. What can we be sure of? What's our firm foundation as we face tomorrow? God's presence, God's goodness and mercy. Surely it'll follow us. Number three, God's faithfulness. Lamentations three. Go to Lamentations. Go to Isaiah, Jeremiah, and then right after Jeremiah, that little book, Lamentations. If you got to Ezekiel, you went too far. Lamentations chapter three, verse 22. We had to sing that hymn as I had already planned on pointing out this truth. It's a great hymn written off of this verse. Great is thy faithfulness. Now, let me make the connection for you. Closely related to the certainty of God's presence. He's not, God hasn't gone anywhere. And related to then God's goodness and mercy as he's present in our lives, his goodness and mercy is going to be known every day. We're always going to know God's goodness in our lives, his mercy. He's going to provide everything that we need. The well will never run dry for God's grace and goodness in our lives. Closely related to all this is the certainty of God's faithfulness. Lamentations 3, 22. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. You see that word fail? No, no, they're not going to end. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. God will always be good because God will always do what is right. So you get, the, you get the connection, right? God's presence, in that presence, his goodness and mercy. And now we're just simply connecting it to God's faithfulness and saying, that's why we can have confidence, because God will always be God. We can face tomorrow with confidence and assurance because God never changes. He never changes. The word great here in this verse, great is thy faithfulness, it's a measuring term. The idea of abundant. Or strong. And here's the word numerous. In other words, the idea is that God's faithfulness cannot be measured. It's without measure. That's literally what the word great means. Highest height. It's just you can't measure the faithfulness of God. It really, what we're getting the picture here is that God's faithfulness will never cease to, to, to exist. It'll never reach an end. God's faithfulness will never reach an end. God will never stop being God. He'll never fail his people, never take, go back on his word. He'll be faithful to carry out his good work in our lives. We can know the certainty of Romans 8, 28. All things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. We can know the certainty of Romans 8, 28. 
Because God will always be God. Nothing is ever going to hinder his work. The last book of the Bible, Malachi, chapter 3, verse 6, gives a beautiful illustration of this thought. Malachi 3, verse 6. Verse 5 of Malachi 3 says, And I will come near to you to judgment. And I will be a swift witness against the sorcerers, against the adul adulterers, against false swearers, against those that oppress the hireling in his wages, the widow, the fatherless, that turn aside the stranger from his right. And fear not me, saith the Lord of hosts. I will come near to you in judgment. And then listen to verse 6. For I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. Here's the next verse. Even from the days of your fathers, ye are gone away from mine ordinances and have not kept them. Return unto me, and I will return unto you, saith the Lord of hosts. So, so here's, the, here's the, the image of God's faithfulness. I am the Lord, I change not. And even in our sinfulness, even in our failure, God remains faithful. He says to his people, it doesn't, it, I'm going to come to you in judgment because I don't overlook sin. I'm going to take care of it. But because I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. In other words, what God is saying is our sin does not affect God's faithfulness. Man, we fail, but God will never fail. God will be faithful to keep his word even in our weakness and frailty. As we head into a new year, even a new day tomorrow, every day we can remind ourselves of these things and then a bunch of other things. But as we head into a new year, we can be confident in God's faithfulness. We can know for sure that God will be faithful. He will keep his word. He will be God. Isaiah tells us that we read some of those verses to begin with, that he is the I am the Lord. <laughs> there is none else. He is not ever hindered in his work. Because of who God is, we can know that faithfulness will abound, that great is thy faithfulness, the, the immeasurable faithfulness of God that never has an end. Number four, just five of them. So number four, go with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Go over to the New Testament. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, we're talking about a firm foundation. What makes up this firm foundation? How can, how can we have hope when we face tomorrow, uh, another year, and people are uncertain, and people are fearful and ang anxious? How can we have a What's the believer's firm foundation? God's life. So to keep the, 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 the flow of the, of the points, God's presence, God's goodness and mercy, God's faithfulness, I put God's life, but what we're talking about here is eternal life. The gift of eternal life with God in heaven. Look at 2 Corinthians 5, verse 1. For, now you remember these words, right? For we know. This is our confidence, right? That if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God in house, not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. Skip down to verse 4. For we that are in this tabernacle do groan, being burdened, not for that we would be unclothed, but clothed upon that mortality might be swallowed up of life. Now he that wrought us for the selfsame thing is God, who also hath given unto us the earnest, the down payment, the guarantee of the Spirit. Therefore, look at the words, we are always confident. Knowing that whilst we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord, for we walk by faith, not by sight. It, it's, it's, it's believing what God has said that gives us confidence. We are confident. Second time, we, we hear that word, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. At the end of Psalm 23, you guys, back in your mind, Psalm 23, verse 6, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And... I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. No matter what we face tomorrow, we know that there is more than just this life. That word if in verse 1, chapter 5, verse 1. If, <laughs> I mean, it, it's a certainty. According to the Bible, it is a certainty. It is appointed unto man once to die. We're all praying and hoping for the rapture. We it would be wonderful to be able to go in the rapture, but, but all the saints that have come before us haven't. 
if this our earthly house and this tabernacle were dissolved, if we know that when this body fails, there's more than just this life. We know, verse 1, that we have a building of God. We know, verse 4, that mortality will be swallowed up of life. We know, verse 6, that we can have confidence knowing that while we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord, but we can be absent from the body and present with the Lord. Here's how the believer lives his life. The believer lives with the hope of heaven. And that's Isaiah's song this morning, Maddie's song this morning. I've got a mansion. Just over the hilltop, in that bright land where we'll never grow. Uh, uh, th th there's all kinds of great songs. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. The gift of God, Romans 6, 23. The gift of God. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Just to put it in our minds. We're not sharing anything new tonight. We're just giving us a perspective as people head into a new year full of uncertainty. What are those things that are solid foundation for the believer? We have God's life. We know that when this earthly house is dissolved, we're going to be with God forever in heaven. That's never going to change. No one's going to take that away from us. The gift of God is eternal life. So chapter 4 of 2 Corinthians, in verse 16, the outward man perished, but the inner man is renewed day by day. For our light affliction, verse 17, chapter 4, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more an exceeding, far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. We have a building not made with hands eternal in the heavens. This world is not my home. Our goal is heaven. We're pressing toward that mark. So teach us to number our days, right? Ephesians chapter 5, uh, walk in uh, walk in in wisdom uh, wake up thou that sleepest and the Lord shall give thee light walk circumspectly that's the word that's in the Bible walk circumspectly we make each day count as we are faithful in our walk with God doing exactly what God's called us to do we do all to the glory of God knowing that heaven is our home we are numbering our days and we're living in light of eternity today and when we die we inherit our eternal home in heaven. The Christian is looking forward to heaven. This is one of the foundations, at least part of the foundation of why we have hope. Why the believer has a different perspective of all that's going on around us. We, heaven is our home. The Christian is looking forward to the resurrection. The Bible promises the resurrection. We're, we're going to be with God as soon as we die. But then God's going to resurrect our bodies. We're going to have a new body. Job looked forward to this. What did Job say? In my flesh I shall see God. David looked forward to this. What did David say in Psalm 16? David said, at thy right hand are pleasures forevermore. In thy presence is fullness of joy. We may not know everything that is coming tomorrow, but we can know for sure that we are going to heaven. <laughs> when this life's over, it's, if this tabernacle is dissolved, we have a building of God and house not made with hands eternal in the heavens. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Part of the foundation, the firm foundation that gives us hope and confidence as we face tomorrow is God's presence, God's goodness and mercy, God's faithfulness, God's life. And then to end with 2 Peter chapter 3, God's promises. 2 Peter chapter 3. Anytime we talk about time and you, 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 like we're doing tonight, we're thinking of a new year, you have to think and put in your mind that the plan of God is, is coming about. That's where I wanted to sing. You can't sing every hymn, but I, the, the, I wanted to sing. It came across my mind and found some other good ones to sing. But this is my father's world. And, uh, and the battle is not done. So 2 Peter chapter 3 gives us this word promise. Start in verse 1. The second epistle, beloved, I now write unto you, in both which I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance, right? That ye may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets, of the commandment of us, the apostles, the Lord and Savior. Do you put it in your mind. Hold on to it because, verse 3, knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers, mockers, ridiculers, walking after their own lust and saying, where is the promise? Now that's the word. Where is the promise 
of his coming. Since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. Where I don't see anything about God, and he's, he's gone. He's not involved anymore. He's never, what are you guys talking about? A promise of his coming. Peter goes on by inspiration to, to point out the false thinking. For this they willingly are ignorant of. What, what are they will, willingly ignorant of? That by the word of God, the heavens were of old and the earth standing out of water and in the water. God created it. Number two, whereby the world that then was being overflowed with water perished. God judged it. Number three, verse seven, but the heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word, are kept in store. Reserved on the fire against the day of judgment and perdition of God. They totally refused to accept this truth. That the God who created everything just judged it once and is now holding this world in store for future judgment. Then he comes back to us under inspiration. Peter does in verse 8. He says, but beloved, hey, the scoffers are there, but you be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord is a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. You know what that verse is meant to do? It's meant to give us confidence and hope to know that God will keep his word. Because verse 9 follows up by saying, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise. Remember verse 3? Or verse 4? Where is the promise of his coming? The Lord is not slack concerning his promise. Just Keep your eyes on the Lord. Wait patiently for him. Verse 8. Because the Lord is not slack concerning his promises. Some men count slackness. But his long suffering to us were not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come. See, there's the confidence. When we live in a world that continues to reject God and gets further and further away from God and, and mocks God and says, whatever is going on with, with this religion thing, this God thing, we don't care about that. This is our world. We've got it under control, and we don't have it under control, so we need to get things under control. We need to figure out what's going on and how we can, how we can protect our world, our planet. For this they are willingly ignorant of. <laughs> but this is God's world. This is my Father's world. And his, his, the battle is not done. Our confidence is, in, is firm in the promises of God related to his plan for this world. The rapture will happen as Jesus returns for his church. The day of the Lord, verse 10, will come. Every wrong will be made right. Sin will be defeated. Satan will be destroyed. God's kingdom of peace will come to this fallen world. A new heaven and a new earth. Just put all that in your mind. What are, what are the promises of God? Related to his plan. That's the, the thought here. What are the promises of God that make up our firm foundation related to God's plan for this world? Our hope is secure. God will keep his word. Jesus will return. This could be the, this could be the day. This could be the year. Jesus could come tomorrow. We must not lose hope. See, that's the whole point of this. He says, I put this in your mind. Verse 1, stir up your mind. Verse 2, be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets and the, of us, the apostles. We must not lose hope. We must build ourselves on our most holy faith, on the word of God, keeping our eyes on Jesus. Romans chapter 8, Paul, this, that was Peter. Romans chapter 8, Paul gives this wonderful picture of the hope that's to come even in the midst of all the, all the things falling apart. Romans chapter 8. And he says this in verse 18, one of my favorite verses. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. For the earnest expectation of the creature waneth for the manifestation of the sons of God. Verse 20, but the, for the creature was made subject to man, not willingly, but by reason of him who hath subjected the same in hope. Verse 22, for we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth and in pain together until now. None of they but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, and we ourselves grow within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit, to know, what is it? The redemption of our body. Here it is, for we are saved by hope. But hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why doth he yet hope for? But we hope for that we see not. Then do we with patience wait for it. This fifth piece of the solid foundation our hope and confidence is in God's promises that will be carried out the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared to the glory which shall be revealed in us 
We can know for sure and be certain of God's promises for this world, his plan for this world as we face tomorrow. And it will happen because God is God. So a firm foundation. In the midst of abounding uncertainty, people, anxiety is high. People talk about what's going to happen. What, what can we expect? We, we, uh, what's going to happen with the war? What's going to happen with the economy? What's going to happen with the election? We've got so many, so many, so many unknowns, uncertainties. Many are fearful, but the believer has hope. What can we be certain of? <laughs> Confidence in the word of God is where it starts. There are some things that we can know for sure. There are some things that we can be certain of as God's people. We can expect some things to continue to be there tomorrow. <laughs> and those things are God's presence, God's goodness and mercy, God's faithfulness, God's eternal life. And God's promises, his plan. Let's pray together. Thank you, God, for this foundation. Solid foundation. It's not stuff we're making up. It's exactly what your word says. And you've put us in mind of it tonight, like you did through Peter for the believers back then. You put us in mind of these things tonight. You stir up our memory. And you help us say, okay, this is it's the world is falling apart, but there's a solid foundation that I'm standing. And someday the world will completely fall apart, but we're going to have a new heaven and a new earth. How firm is our foundation, Lord? Thank you for this hope that fills our hearts. And, and I pray that we'll face each day, not, not just the whole year ahead of us. Uh, this is good to have the right perspective for the year, but for each day, Lord, we wake up with hope. We wake up with confidence. And we face each day in you, Lord. In you, your presence, your faithfulness, your goodness and mercy, your life and your plan, your promises to carry out your perfect plan. Thank you for this confidence in our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen.